Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamenova Yoga, I'm Ali and today we are completing the cycle, we're doing my favorite sign, Pisces. Pisces is the completion of the cycle. I know I said every sign is my favorite and of course they all are because they are part of the whole and in many ways they are one another, of course that's how um, reality in general is but Pisces is the completion of the cycle it contains the ultimate secret of the universe within itself and it's the sign where the divine and the human merge where the matter merges with the soul they become one where the duality has the capacity to interplay with each other and become eventually one. We have the two Pisces, the two fish, swimming in opposite directions. One is exiting and going into the abyss, into the um, endless universe, and the other into the core of existence and matter. And both of them are interplaying, interplaying into this cycle of samsara. But in Pisces, this is where we can break that cycle and exit the place of suffering and karma into the um, existence uh, in union with the divine. Another way to see Pisces is also uh, the era, the age of Pisces was the Pisces of Christianity and Christ coming into um, form. So the merging of Jesus and Christ again is form and spirit or divine and physical merging into one coming together into one and with pisces look at your chart see what planet you have in pisces this is the place of breaking out of the uh, conditioning the form the narrow view of reality so that we can we can expand and see more of what there is if reality is endless and um, absolutely unlimited and um, mm, there is so many layers of um, dimensions and timelines and expressions of reality and we see only this narrow um, version of it in Pisces we have the capacity to expand to open out of that narrow bandwidth and see so much more of reality so look at your chart and see where Pisces lays in your chart what planets you have in Pisces where that capacity to expand to feel one with the divine with the divine consciousness is for you and um, Pisces is ruled by three planets on three different levels. We look at the physical level. In Pisces, is ruled uh, by Neptune, and Neptune is the ocean of consciousness, the divine consciousness, the ocean, the waters of divinity. And then um, we have Jupiter as a second or a ruler of uh, also of Pisces and with uh, Jupiter. Jupiter is also the expansion of that consciousness, the merging with the divine again. And um, the hierarchical ruler is Pluto, and Pluto is the depth, the depth and the transformation, the transcendence. Um, so Pluto is considered a dwarf planet, but I have never seen a person with a strong Pluto in their chart that is not really um, um, tangible for me. I can always see Pluto on a person, I can always see Saturn on a person. If someone has Saturn conjunct ascendant or Pluto conjunct ascendant, those are very, very um, tangible uh, qualities to perceive for, my, for me. Um, and then you have Neptune that can also be conjunct ascendant and that can give a more uh, whimsical quality to a person, more dreamy, more um, poetic. So I'm getting a little, a little uh, carried away. Pisces is uh, probably my strongest uh, constellation in my chart. So I figured I would just speak from my own personal experience and kind of give it my own uh, flavor. Of course, I give my own flavor to all the planets, but this one in particular, I wanted to express how I feel about it rather than how it is by the book. And how I feel about Pisces. Now, Pisces, uh, uh, you, someone that has 
the ruler of um, their chart, Venus in Pisces is talking to you right now and someone that has 12th house, all the personal planets, all my personal planets are in 12th house except for the moon. So I have a very strong understanding of the 12th house. It's a very dissolving place. So 12th house and Pisces, those are places where it dissolve. We can feel the union with the divine and where divine um, consciousness can be integrated into the physical um, experience. So what, that, what does it mean? For example, uh, one can experience through physical experiences the union with the divine. And you can call the divine different names. You can call it according to any religion or spiritual teaching or understanding of something that is beyond us, that is the ultimate, uh, the ultimate consciousness. Uh, the ultimate expression of creation. You can call it however you want uh, to call it. The words are very limiting, but it is where dissolving of the physical and of the constraints and of the chains and of the limitations of perception can happen. So expansion can happen. So Pisces on a more practical level have to be careful because if they're not evolved because any person can be born in any sign and that probably happens in every combination of uh, lives and experiences but if someone has a more restricted um, perception in this particular lifetime that doesn't mean anything about their greater uh, self but just in this lifetime and they're born in Pisces uh, uh, and they feel confused and constrained and just a vague sense of something out there but they can't quite um, tap into it that, that can lead to addictions so Pisces is the sign of addictions and be careful be watchful for addictions in strong Neptune alignment strong Pisces um, positions and, and that is to kind of give a cautionary sight to Pisces because once someone begins to dissolve that is the ultimate and most people won't understand that because it is otherworldly. The people that have a little bit of an otherworldly um, quality to them that is a strong Piscean quality. So with all of this being said it's very vague because Pisces in general is so expanded, so out there, so whimsical. <laughs> so with that being said uh, we're gonna flow with the feeling of integrating the higher consciousness into the physical mind, into the physical even brain, into the physical perception, feeling the oneness of all, all of us as completely integrated as a part of the one and crisscrossing. Uh, of each other's existence. So there is no uh, defined lines between you and me. Uh, I'm an expression of me right now, but since um, time is very, um, very much a, a construct of this perception and reality, then outside of this timeline, um, things become a little more open and a little more fluid. And I am not as much me as I'm everything. and same goes for you and sometimes we become more of the other or more of everything and it's just very fluid that's the ultimate Piscean quality is fluidity and being able to see things from many many perspectives and it is similar to Gemini because this is a mutable sign it's on the mutable cross uh, with um, Pisces, Virgo, Gemini and uh, which one am I missing? Of the, we have Pisces of the water signs. Um, oh, Sagittarius of the uh, fire signs. So um, Pisces, water, feminine, um, mutable. Uh, there is this ultimate dissolving and ultimate merging and ultimate transformation and ultimate oneness. So here we can perceive the oneness and tangibly feel the oneness with all. When the, um, the lines dissolve and when um, the form dissolves because only due to the form and to this um, 
corner of perception of reality are we able to see ourselves as separate. But once the form dissolves and also um, the, the 3D mind dissolves, we can perceive ourselves as uh, the spark or the the spark of divine consciousness. So if we think of divine consciousness as one, that wanted to experience itself um, into the unlimited universe and it just shot out into each and every direction we, and we all became segments of one of those sparks, but not a complete spark because consciousness is too broad to be held into one body, into one brain. So we are, um, <laughs> we're at the same time many consciousnesses in many bodies and in many experiences but we are having the point of attention right now here is this particular body but we're at the same time many other bodies or all other bodies and all other experiences especially if you throw in the timelines and all of that it becomes it becomes otherworldly let's just call it that so oneness with the divine and oneness with everything that is uh, in existence, whether this is a plant, a mineral, uh, an animal, a planet, uh, a being, say the consciousness of the light, the consciousness of the air, all of that. It just all becomes one experience. All right, let's, let's dissolve and let's flow with strength and ease. All right, so for this class, you're going to need a chair or a wall. A wall would work. It's not going to be very formal. It's not bar where we're going to hold on to, but just something to have for a little bit of balance. It will be again a little flowy, a little different. And we're going to begin with movement, starting with moving the arms, be a little more, a little more expressive, more Piscean. The ultimate expression of a Piscean feminine is nowadays the Bohemian expressive, theatrical, spiritual archetype. And moving side to side, bringing the shoulders, feeling the back, deepening the breath. Great. Shifting them. And moving the arms forward and back and forward and back. Side to side. Love is one of the key words in Pisces love, divine love, divine consciousness, and sacrifice. Serving through sacrifice, serving humanity through sacrifice. Breathe. Breathe and really be expressive in your move so that you're integrating more muscles. Feeling the body as yours and one, but also feeling it as an integral part, as a cell of the whole, as if the whole is an organism and you're one cell in it. There is a definite, definite you, but at the same time you is an integral part of the whole. Letting go is another key word in Pisces. And here we're going to press 
from the right to the left as if you're pushing air. Push, 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 give it the push. And now the opposite, push. So we're moving in different fashions that are very fluid. No straight lines. On the booty program, I have a class called straight lines. It was probably Sagittarius. This is the opposite. Great, now scooping water and releasing. Great, now scooping water from the ground up. So bring it big, releasing down. Formal warm up. Somatic movement, feeling the body. over the head and reach to the right and reach to the left so now you're <laughs> moving kind of with the quality of a seaweed in water moving in water side to side but at the same time keep your shoulders back and keep your posture upright so that we're moving in those little places in the back and the obliques Great, hands over the knees for vacuum. One more. Inhale, reach, exhale, folding. Inhale, look ahead of your plank. Chaturanga, up dog. Chaturanga, down dog, take the right leg up. Step it through. And here, windling the hands, facing the right side of your room. Come up in a twist. Look behind you. Expanding your focus and exhale down one legged plank, one legged chaturanga, up dog, chaturanga, down dog, take the left leg up, step it through, take the left arm up and come up, windmilling the arms, look up. Lengthen. And exhale. Down one legged. Plank one legged. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Breathe. Look under the left shoulder, under the right. Take the right leg up. Step it through. Come up. High lunge. And here we're going to tip 
forward lean forward with a straight back and we're going to touch the floor straight back come up lean forward floor come up so engaging again the booty three four like a deadlift five six seven eight nine this is building upon the previous classes in the astrology series 10 hands in prayer twist look down and step your left foot next to your right in a chair twist and step it back You can go a little deeper here, optional, in a, something that not everybody can do, but if, if you can deepen it, clasp. And release, reach, drop the back knee down, low lunge. You can take your front heel off the floor, tippy toes, and exhale. Chaturanga. Up dog, chaturanga, down dog, take the left leg up. Step it through high lunge. And we're gonna move in one piece. The upper body is moving, hinging, hinging at the hips, forward, floor, come up. Two. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hands in prayer twist. Soften. Look down. Step your left foot in. Right foot in next to the left, sorry. So we're in chair, twist chair. And step it back, reverse it. And you can clasp optional. release drop the back knee down low lunge and you can take the front heel of the floor tippy toes open and time to move back into a vinyasa chaturanga up dog chaturanga down dog Walking in place here. Inhale the right leg up. Step it through. Come up. High lunge. So here we're going to dip the lunge. Then lift with the leg in the air, parallel to the floor, hip closing in so it's square and back to high lunge two it's combination move and it all comes from that posterior chain three four feel the booty the back working five six 
seven, eight, nine, and yes, ten. Step it in in a closing, closing stance. Staggered squat. And here we're going to touch the floor around the toes and jump up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And step it out. Low lunge one more time. This time we're gonna bring the left elbow on the outside of the right knee for a low lunge twist. We're moving, we're moving everything. Come to the front, bring your hands here, right on the collarbone. Just gently pressing the skin down. Look up and move your bottom lip over the right. It will stretch your entire, this is from the face yoga. It will stretch out your entire jawline neck and decollete so good all right opposite side chaturanga up dog chaturanga down dog left leg comes up high lunge Dip the right knee down, straight down. So you're extending the knee down, keeping the left knee over the ankle. And they lift, fire up the glutes on the left side. Two. Straight back. Three. Squeeze everything. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Staggered, more narrow stance, and we're going to touch and hop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Step it out, lower the knee down, open, twist. Feel the twist. Coming out of the twist, hands on the collar, collarbones. Moving. We're doing variations of this in the booty program. I'm including face yoga. So here in this variation, it really tightens this part of your face. And uh, double, is it double chin, double neck, whatever. <laughs> it is called, it really tones the muscles here, which is very important. The way we are aware of core and legs and all of that this is another <laughs> another muscle so you can just glide the skin down and push the bottom lip over the top lip and surrender to that stretch all right i promise we'll come back to it and Time for vinyasa. Down dog. So here we're going to bend the knees and hover them over the floor. So if you're having a dream, we're gonna 
cover them over the floor, the knees. And from here, we're gonna jump back into one legged plank, hover the knees and squeeze the left knee to the right. So the combo is jump into one legged plank, hover, twist, hover, jump. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And sit between your heels just for a reset for a little stretch here. We'll go to the other side. Breathing in the oneness of existence. It's a concept outside of your physical mind. So we have to break out of the paradigm. We've, we've made a contract to be in temporarily so that we can see outside of it and experience the expansion of the divine all right that's why we do yoga to feel something because we have this sense of this grandness that that what we just see is not completely reflecting the the wholeness of existence all right opposite sides Lots of jumping, empty mind, hovering the knees over and jumping back into one legged plank. And sorry, I was on the other side. So jump, jumping the left leg, hover right knee to the left elbow. And two, three, and Four. This is quite challenging. Five. Six. It's a full body exercise. Squeeze the belly. Seven. Eight. nine, 10, great, and one more time, sit between the heels, stretching the quadriceps, you can lay down, having an expansive breath, as if you're breathing out into all all the dimensions of the universe into the universe, multiverse, any healing oneness, divine consciousness. And coming up, all right. Yogic squat. Hands in prayer, opening the hips. Widening the back. Come on to the toes and come up. So here you can use the chair, but you can just have it as a, or a wall. You can have it as a option. You don't have to depend on it. We're going to lower down and come up onto the tippy toes. One, two, three, four. 
knees out five six seven eight nine and ten now we're gonna point the toes forward and we're going to do the same thing except for in a squat alignment all right try to push the knees back as much as possible one two three four five six seven eight nine ten great either on the floor stretching the hamstring or on the chair you can stretching again the hamstring same thing just stretch the back of the leg here the glutes opposite side try to square the hips and something I've been really really enjoying is one legged onto the toes squat it really engages the muscle the muscles in a different way and if you do my different classes you get to engage things from different angles different ideas a very piscean concept of just seeing things from different prisms and seeing the all the lines of possibilities each and every thread of endless possibilities not only in the metaphysical but in the physical all right from here we're gonna lower down into a squat onto the toes and come back up you can hold the wall or, or your chair and to really focus on squeezing and feeling the move and three four five six seven eight nine and last one opposite side focus on the moves if you have to hold on to a chair for support one two three four five six seven eight really pushing through the glutes and quads of course nine ten all right here left leg facing your chair or wall and we're going to come on to the tippy toes give it a shake you can start with the right I'm starting with the left so I can face you that's the only reason left or right whichever one you're using first and here we're going to lower down either either into knee down or leg out and come up so that is one option and the other is to lower whichever one or mix it half and half let's go one light support on the hand so everything is focused here working here in new ways two see i'm moving through between the chair and the wall so i'm not relying on one heavily five 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And that has a little bit of the side booty elements of week two of the booty program we did side booty and it was Mauro said it was a little bit like a shape shifter type of class all right opposite side coming on to the tippy toes and lower down come up one two three focus on the muscles working Last one, great. Inhale your hands over the head, clasp and draw a circle with your fingertips and then reverse it. And here we're going to take the right leg back and stretch the top of the foot, quite the opposite of the high heels. Uh, direction so we're stretching the front the top Pisces rolls the feet opposite side exhale folding knees on the ground double pigeon we're going to stack the ankles on top of the knees and flex the feet so the shin bones are on top of each other you feel this deep stretch through the hips your knee might be in the air that's fine just flex your feet for protection of the knee and for proper alignment and breathe into the stretch with surrender another key word in Pisces ultimately Integrating the lessons of Pisces is the ultimate because it's dissolving to only the physical perception and merging into the metaphysical, the divine. The thing that falls outside of our perception and what falls within our perception is just a tiny dot and the rest is all of reality and existence. What we call reality is just what we perceive with our limited um, instrument. So we in Pisces, we have that possibility to branch out into the unlimited perception. And we're probably only perceiving parts of our universe, but it is an endless, ever expanding, um, widening of consciousness all right opposite side i will most likely do um, uh, next week or following this most likely the third end sign which holds the fifth element of ether. Ether is not represented in um, the four elements in astrology. So although it is part of our reality because it holds um, the space between um, the spiritual and the form, it is the place where energy realizes ideas into matter. So ether is integral, it holds all of our reality. It's not represented in the four astrological elements, but it is there. To some degree, it will be in Pisces, of course. So this is not the end of the series. It is a beginning and a completion at the same time.
All right, let's spread the legs wide and do a forward stretch, flex the feet, hold back on those stretches a little bit. And reaching side to side. And let's fold the feet in an easy seated pose. You can open the palms of the hands forward, placing them on your knees, closing the eyes, having a nice, beautiful upright position here, reaching into the cosmos, grounding into the Gaia, feeling both energies flowing through you and deepening the breath, becoming aware of your breath. And observing your body as if you're seeing your body through your closed eyes. Just observing yourself, your physical self. And now asking yourself, who is the observer? Who is the one observing you? The consciousness that is seeing and perceiving and observing you. And as you expand out of your narrow perception of reality and into the consciousness that is observing you, seeing that consciousness is the, con is the ocean of consciousness is the oneness where all of consciousness resides and so such seeing everyone is a part of that ocean of consciousness and so everyone becomes you and you become everyone and every single person and being is a part of your consciousness, defined and not defined. And although we all have taken a persona, we wear a mask of identity, we are all behind that mask, this ocean of consciousness. You know, they, although we may be perceiving it from a separate, from our point of view, point of attention, beyond that perception, we expand into the whole. And although we can have our individuality, we also are immersed in that oneness, no conflict, opposite concepts, duality is part of that expansive consciousness, so perceiving ourselves and everybody in the world as us and us as them. And that includes the people we love, the people we don't like very much, the villains, the heroes, the mothers, the daughters, the wise men, mm -hmm. the dummies, and everything in between. It's just different expressions of that one consciousness.
as every single particle has chosen to experience itself. in the endless variants of the self and so there is no superiority or inferiority deserving of love or not deserving of love all of this falls away melts and we become that pure consciousness where karma dissolves because we awaken we become the awakened one the awakened oneness the awakened consciousness personality becomes the container, the temporary container for that expansive oneness and consciousness and without attachment we allow it to be. We have the wider view, the broader awareness of it and at the same time we allow it to be defined as that gives us this experience here. Without the personality, we wouldn't have this experience. So we welcome that personality as something that the oneness, the divine consciousness have chosen to create as an experience of itself. And so we see that everything that we believe in that is within, within this reality is just a small version of the field beyond this. And so all the concepts of karma and rebirth or mistakes or regrets, all of that, or even trauma, pain, all of that falls away because we merge with the one consciousness with the most expanded version of ourselves that transcends the human and let's take a big breath in and reach over the head, exhale the hands over the third eye and blink your eyes open, containing that expanded experience of the one, of the oneness, of the divine within that human persona that you occupy for this time being. And there's no conflict, it is all one and flow into the rest of your day with that awareness, with that expanded awareness. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you with, um, if you have suggestions for the next series, there is endless possibilities. Someone suggested the chakras and some I can do uh, a little more in the astrology field because there is so much more to be covered. Ether the 13th sign uh, certain planets are important Chiron uh, we have uncovered uh, which is the wounded healer so there is quite a bit more that we can dive into and uh, we can go into a little less metaphysical areas also such as the personality astrology and such um, I'm planning a, a online workshop so I will let you know about it but it's going to be something about shadow work transcendence and also visualization of new earth so it's going to be something that goes along with the strong energy right now in the cosmos in <laughs> on earth so i'll see you with all these uh, future projects with the booty program on the website it's still full full on we're having fun there so come join there and um, thank you for joining me remember to flow with strength and peace